hi welcome back to my channel well in this video we'll try to learn some of the basic concepts which are involved in execution and implementation of a very important or we can say a widely used experimental design across agricultural sciences and forestry especially when we are conducting our experimental trials in fields and that design is known as a randomized complete block design this experimental design is usually used whenever the experimental material is heterogeneous, especially in fields. So how we are going to implement this design? There are some important conditions for implementation of this design. The first condition is the identification of fertility gradient. Suppose if we want to evaluate different number of varieties or different tri or different treatments in fields. So for that, we need to know the we need to identify first the fertility gradient in which direction it is moving so the condition number one is the identification of the fertility gradient and its direction it should always be moving in one direction so uh, whenever the experimental material is heterogeneous and in those situations this experimental material is grouped or partitioned into homogeneous subgroups which is known as uh, blocking or which uh, which are known as blocks because this is the design in which uh, uh, there is an implementation of a very important uh, principle of experimental design that is local control which is not uh, implemented or used in case of a CRD because in CRD uh, we used to have a uniform or homogeneous experimental material but in case of RCBD we are dealing with a heterogeneous material that is why there is a, uh, there is a need of uh, local control uh, so if the number of experimental units within each group is as same as uh, the number of treatments so the number of experimental units uh, within each block are equal to the number of treatment and if every treatment appears precisely once in each group then such arrangement is called or known as randomized complete block design so experimental design uh, which is used uh, whenever we are conducting our experiments in fields and in case of field experiments uh, the identification of the fertility gradient is important its direction is also important so identification its direction that means it should always be moving only in one direction and in this case the number of experimental units are equal to the number of treatments and uh, another important thing is the number of treatments are equal to the block size and uh, the number of replicates are always equal to the number of blocks so randomized complete block design as the name itself suggests it is a complete block design that means there's a complete set of treatments in each block so it is used whenever we are conducting our experiment in uh, uh, in fields and especially whenever the experimental material is heterogeneous as far as the agricultural experiments are concerned uh usually these experimental materials uh, are not homogeneous so in such situation the principle of local control is adapted and the experimental material is grouped into homogeneous subgroups which are known as blocks uh, so uh, whenever you have a patch of a land or you are you are having a field that whole field has to be divided into different blocks in a way so that each and every block is uniform or homogeneous within itself and there's a maximum amount of variation between uh, the different blocks and each block uh, it has to be further divided into the number of plots and that depends upon how many treatments uh, we are evaluating so if we have five treatments so there must be five uh, plots within that block and uh, the shape or we can say the size or shape of the block is very important normally it is uh, uh, it is advisable to use a rectangular shaped uh, plot with its long size parallel to the direction of fertility uh, gradient for example if the soil fertility uh, since the soil, soil fertility is important that influences the crop responses uh, which is a fact and it has to be identified and uh, the procedure which is used to, uh, or executed for identification of fertility gradient in case of experimental designs when we are conducting them in fields is uniformity trials uh, if this fertility gradient for example is found to run in one direction say north to south then the block has to be formed in the post direction that is from the east for example the fertility gradient is moving in this direction then what we have to do we have to make blocks which are perpendicular to the direction of fertility gradient and uh, the uh, these uh, plots 
uh, which are um, uh, within these uh, blocks here for example if we take an example here uh, we have to evaluate five treatments and adjust them into three blocks so um, the blocks uh, they have to be set in perpendicular to the direction of fertility gradient uh, since the block size is equal to the number of treatments so every block uh, will be having uh, one two three four five treatments and uh, the sh shape uh, or we can say the length the longer part of these plot they have to be parallel to the uh, direction of the fertility gradient which is uh, quite advisable and feasible to get the precise or we can say um, precise results in context to these experimental design so the important thing about this is if the fertility gradient is moving in one direction the block should be always made in perpendicular to the direction of fertility gradient and uh, the plots their longer side should always be in parallel to the uh, fertility gradient direction of the fertility gradient in case of randomized complete block design the block size is equal to the number of uh, the block size is equal to the number of plot these treatments and the number of replicates are always equal to the number of blocks now the statistical analysis is concerned uh, this is the same uh, thing which we have studied in case of previous video in context to uh, completely randomized block design let us suppose that there are k treatments and they are arranged in b blocks so we have k treatments and they have been adjusted in these uh, blocks so these are the treatment totals and treatment means and another important thing is that we need to get the block totals also and uh, block means also so through this uh, we used to apply this model this is the model of uh, randomized complete block design where this yij is nothing it is the response of dh block on uh, i treatment mu is the general mean alpha a is the treatment effect this is the block effect and this is the error which is always follows a normal distribution and in this case we used to have two type of null hypothesis one pertains to these treatment effect that there is no significant uh, difference between the treatment and the blocking effect uh, is also there is no significant effect across the number of blocks so uh, what are the different steps which are involved for implementation or we can say the form uh, for how can we perform the analysis of variance in case of RCBD it is similar to that um, CRD the only thing we have an addition of one source of variation that is due to the blocks so first thing is that we need to get the grand total then from the grand total we used to get this correction factor then the second important step to get the sum of square due to the treatments which is nothing it is squaring the every treatments uh, total uh, then whole divided by the number of blocks or we can say the number of replicates and every sum of square has to be deducted uh, with this correction factor because otherwise we'll be having this uh, this raw sum of square and in order to get the corrected sum of square we need to uh, we need to deduct it with every sum of square in case of block sum of square we need to get the sum of uh, total of each uh, block across different replicates and divide it with how many number of treatments we have and the same thing that we need to uh, deduct it from the correction factor same is the case with total sum of square which is quite easy to square each and every individual observation and at the same time add them and uh, once you will get some value then deduct with the correction factor error sum of square is very simple you need to deduct all these sum of square once you have calculated all these sum of square you need to put them in an ANOVA table so in this uh, RCBD we used to have uh, three sources of variation one is due to treatments uh, which is an assignable cause another due to the blocks again an assignable cause then we have an error in case of this we have a different uh, type of degrees of freedom in context to error degrees of freedom in case of CRD we used to have n minus t that means the number of observations minus the number of treatments but here it is nothing it is the multiple of these two sources of variation here k is the number of treatment b is the number of blocks or you can say the number of replicates so and here what you need to once you have got these uh, sum of square you need to divide these uh, sum of square with this respect to degrees of freedom to get the mean square due to treatment mean square due to blocks and you will get this mean square then finally you need to get this f value you need to uh, you need to prove whether your hypothesis is uh, whether you are in an agreement with your hypothesis which you have set or in you are in a disagreement with your hypothesis so in this case in case of rcbd we used to uh, we have to get 
two F uh, values here, one uh, due to the treatment and another one due to the block. With respect to the degrees of freedom that pertains to this treatment and with error degrees of freedom in case of treatments and if we are interested to get the F value of this blocks we need to get it uh, from the degrees of freedom due to the blocks and error degrees of freedom at a respect to level of significance normally in case of agricultural sciences we used to take 5% level of significance and we have to use the same thumb rule if this calculated is greater than this tabulated we are in a good position to reject the null hypothesis so let us uh, take an example by means of which uh, all these things will be proved uh, for example, we have to evaluate uh, six uh, varieties of an apricot uh, in terms of uh, yield, which is in the kilograms, and they have been adjusted in five blocks. Uh, so we need to find out whether there exists a significant difference between uh, these uh, six varieties, and obviously uh, there are, is a significant effect of blocking. So we have uh, the data here, uh, treatment A, B, C, D, E, F. So the first important thing is that means these rows pertain to blocks and columns are treatments. So we need to figure it out whether there exists a significant difference across these uh, varieties, six varieties with respect to the variable of interest or response variable that is yield. So we need to start with the basic arithmetics, get the totals across the treatments and across the blocks. So these are the treatment totals and these are the treatment uh, block totals. Then after that one you will get the totals of blocks and treatments get the grand total because that is very important for getting the value of correction factor and once you have got these uh, totals also get the average value of blocks as well as treatment. So we used to start with the first step that is to get the correction factor square of the grand total divided by the number of observation in this case we have six varieties and uh, uh, five blocks so six multiplied five is 30 so this is the value of correction factor then sum of square due to the varieties you need to get the totals of the variety this is the variety a total b total c uh, d e and f the square each and every total at the same time and whole divided by the number of the blocks that is five in this case minus correction factor so we need, we got a value of 1016.2 and we need to get this block sum of square so we need to get the block totals 151 square plus this square plus this plus this plus this that is 156 uh, whole square whole divided by the number of treatments minus correction factor so 61.47 is the block sum of square and total sum of square is very simple square each and every observation at the same time add them once you will get some value say for example we got a value of 32194 in this case then deduct it with the correction factor then error sum of square is very uh, easy to get you need to subtract all these uh, sum of square so that you will get uh, this error uh, sum of square which is here for 418.13 so once you have got these uh, sum of squares put these sum of squares at their respective source of variations for treatment we have 1016.7 and this is due to the blocks and this is due to error and this is total so how you are going to get the mean square divide this value with its respective degrees of freedom same is the case with this same is the case with this you will get the mean square but here we need to get two f values one uh, due to the treatments and, and another due to the blocks so at five uh, uh, how we are going to get this f that means we will divide this 2033.44 divided by 20.90 we will get 97.29 then uh, for blocks uh, f uh, calculated for blocks is 15.36 uh, whole divided by 20.90 uh, that is 0 0.73 so uh, we need to tally these values so let us uh, take an example of this uh, here the calculated value is 97 and tabulated value at 5 degrees of freedom because we have six treatments uh, that means six minus one is five and we have five blocks five minus one is four so in case of this uh, we have a, a value of f value of 2.71 uh, which is uh, which is very uh, uh, which is very small in comparison to this calculated value so in this case uh, we have every reason to believe that we are going to reject the null hypothesis that there exists a no significant difference between the, these treatment so this f value suggests that there exists a significant difference across these six varieties in terms of yield now if we will take the example of the f value uh, of uh, this blocks due to the blocks since this calculated value is uh, less than the stabilated value and the thumb rule is that whenever the calculated value of test of significance is 
less than this is critical or tape related value we are not in a position to reject in our hypothesis that means we have not got an evidence to disapprove a particular hypothesis so in this case that means uh, there exists no sig no significant difference across these uh, five drugs but in this case of varieties we have got a significant uh, f uh, calculated value or we can say since in this case uh, the f value is calculated f is greater than its stable related value at its respective degrees of freedom so in uh, case of varieties we are rejecting the null hypothesis but in case of blocks uh, we are not rejecting the null hypothesis we are accepting uh, this null hypothesis and uh, because we don't have any evidence to reject it here 5 is nothing this is the degrees of freedom due to the treatments and this is the degrees of freedom due to the blocks here so once we have got this evidence of that there exists a significant uh, difference uh, across these uh, six varieties we need to perform its post hoc analysis uh, for that we need to calculate the mean uh, critical difference or least significant difference and the formula is here under root of mean square error twice of mean square divided by the number of replicates multiply by this test of significance say t uh, with its level of significance at 5% level of sin with its respect to degrees of freedom so in this case the mean square error is 20.90 so 2 multiplied by 20.90 whole divided by 5 because the number of blocks are 5 and the t value at 5% level of significance and 20 error degrees of freedom is 2.09 which is 6.04 so uh, we need to tally this critical difference value or this is the standard by which uh, we can uh, we can uh, make a decision whether there exists a significant difference between a pair of treatments and the thumb rule is this if the uh, difference between two means uh, or two treatment means is greater than its uh, critical difference than those two uh, means are they are treated to be significant if we will take an example of the 65 and 28 the critical difference is 6.04 the difference between these two is very large in comparison to this critical difference so f and variety e they are significantly different from each other but if we will take an example of 28 and 25 which is underlined here there is a non-significant difference between these two same is the case with 18 and 20 14 say d and c and same is the case with this c and p uh, so these varieties uh, which are marked by this uh, line underline uh, underline that they are non-significant with, res uh, with respect to the variable of interest and the variety b and uh, this f this is significantly different uh, from each other uh, same is the case with 25a and d this is significantly different from each other uh, so this is a thumb rule that means two pairs of treatments they are considered to be significant if the difference between these two uh, if the difference between them is uh, greater than the calc this uh, least significant value or critical difference otherwise uh, vice versa so this is a design uh, which is uh, widely used whenever we are dealing over uh, or we are conducting an experiment in fields and the condition in this design is that the experimental material is uh, obviously uh, heterogeneous but uh, in case of field experiments the identification of fertility gradient is very important this is one of the conditions and its direction if it is moving in only one direction then uh, we are good to go with this design uh, so this is a design which is widely used across the agricultural sciences and in this design a complete set of treatments are uh, involved in uh, each and every block so every block consists a complete set of designs and all these treatments are uh, adjusted randomly in case of each uh, block uh, so uh, in next video we'll try to learn uh, an important design in which we have if for example we have fertility gradient in a two direction then which design we are going to use so see you in next video till then thank you very much